Sehr geehrter Herr Honorable Prime Minister, dearest Keir, welcome you here in Berlin today. I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate you once again on becoming Prime Minister. Germany and the United Kingdom are good friends, close partners and trusted allies. The both of us will be working hard to ensure that this relationship will continue to thrive. Meine Damen und Herren, Ladies and uh, gentlemen, I'm extraordinarily pleased to welcome Prime Minister Keir Starmer so soon after taking office. Germany and the UK share long-standing and a trustful partnership, which is based on shared values and reliable friendship. We are going to foster and promote this cooperation for the benefit of our peoples, for the benefit of Europe and security and the transatlantic sphere. We want to continue to intensify uh, these relations. We don't want to leave it at statements, but base our relations on an entirely new footing. In the coming months, we are going to work towards a treaty which reflects the whole spectrum of our relations. Such a treaty has not existed between Germany and the United Kingdom yet. We also want to deepen a cooperation between our two governments uh, through government-to-government -government consultations, which we are going to have very soon. Already now, we're coordinating closely in our day-to-day -day work. Uh, um, we coordinate closely and based on the spirit of trust. All of this goes to show Germany and the UK are special partners indeed. Together, we want to strengthen the European pillar in NATO and closer cooperation in the field of security will play an important role. We also dealt with the situation in Ukraine today. Germany and the UK stand firmly by Ukraine's side. I explicitly say this also against the backdrop of the fact that attempts were made to sow the seeds of doubt when it comes to this commitment. We will continue to lend financial economic, political and military support as long as this is necessary. The budget, uh, the draft budget um, has earmarked 4 billion euro in bilateral aid for Ukraine. In addition, together with the G7 states, we provide a 50 billion loan to Ukraine in order to make sure that Ukraine has fin reliable financial support. And in order to do so, we also use windfall profits from immobilized Russian central banks' assets. We're deeply worried about the situation in the Middle East and the escalation in the region. The immense human suffering which we're observing um, uh, for months is growing just as the risk of a regional conflagration. We call upon all uh, parties involved to continue negotiations immediately, negotiations on a ceasefire and the liberation of hostages. The catastrophic humanitarian situation in Gaza and the lack of protection um, for civilians and humanitarian aid workers is something that deeply worries me. Israel needs to do more. We coordinate closely, not only in terms of security policy. It is also important to further develop relations between the European Union and the United Kingdom. I am happy about the announcement by Keir Starmer to uh, seek a reset in the relations to the European Union. We want to take this hand which has reached out to us. The UK has always been an indispensable partner when it comes to solving the big issues affecting all of Europe, and nothing has changed after the UK left the European Union. With the withdrawal agreement, the protocol in Ireland and Northern Ireland, the corporate, uh, comprehensive um, trade and cooperation agreement, and the Windsor framework, we have a reliable legal framework for our relations that needs to be fully implemented. One last point is important to me, the contacts between our societies, between Germans and uh, people in the UK have declined massively after Brexit and uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. We want to change that because if you know each other well, you understand each other better. We share similar views on this and this is we want, why we want to intensify the uh, exchanges between Germany and the UK. Mr. Prime Minister, welcome to Berlin. Thank you very much. Um, can I first express my sincere condolences 
for the shocking attack in Zollingen last week. Our country knows what it's like to suffer such senseless and despicable acts, and our thoughts are with all the families affected by this terrible event. And Olaf, thank you. It's fantastic to be here with you in Berlin. Uh, not, alas, my first visit here as Prime Minister. Football, as it turns out, uh, decided to visit its second home in Spain this term when I was last here. But anyway, it's still an incredible experience and a showcase for the fantastic hospitality of this great nation. So thank you for hosting yet another episode in English footballing trauma. <laughs> I've been through a lot. Anyway, I'm delighted to be back at this moment of opportunity for our two countries. Olaf, on every occasion that we've met, we've talked about our ambitions for the future, our values of security, prosperity and respect, and our shared determination to harness the power of government for the service of working people. And that is what we are doing today. A new UK-Germany treaty, a once-in-a-generation chance to deliver for working people in Britain and in Germany. A new agreement, a testament to the depth and potential of our relationship with deeper links on science, technology, development, people, business, culture, a boost to our trading relations. Germany, of course, already the UK's second largest trading partner in the world. And through that, a chance to create jobs here and in the United Kingdom and deliver that most precious of goods for both our countries, economic growth. Let me be clear, growth is the number one mission of my government. And what we understand clearly is that building relationships with our partners here in Germany and across Europe is vital to achieving it. That is what our agreement today represents, the chance that we have. We will also deepen cooperation on shared social challenges, for example, on illegal immigration, because we cannot smash the smuggler gangs who perpetrate this vile trade without the help of our partners. And I'm really glad that we had substantive discussions today about how we tackle the smuggling gangs and agreed to develop a joint action plan to tackle illegal migration. We will also renew our commitment to the Calais Group, enhance our intelligence sharing on organised immigration crime, but also increase collaboration on tackling climate change, an important goal for the planet, of course, for greater energy security, but also for tackling the drivers of challenges like illegal migration at source. And finally, at the heart of this treaty will be a new defence agreement, an agreement that builds upon our already formidable defence cooperation, but which expands that relationship to face the threats of a volatile world together. That, of course, means a shared resolve to stand up for the security of our people and the wider European continent. And that begins with our unyielding support for Ukraine. And we discussed that in some detail today. Because as Europe's largest contributors to Ukraine's war efforts, and as the nations with the highest defence expenditure among the European countries in NATO, we know only too well the debt we owe to the Ukrainian people, who fight not just to defend themselves, but for the people and all the people across Europe. So today, we affirmed our commitment to stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. We also share a common commitment to resolve the crisis in the Middle East, as you've just referenced. And we agree on Israel's right to self-defense in compliance with international humanitarian law, the need for de-escalation across the region and for restraint and caution to be exercised, unfettered humanitarian access into Gaza, agreement to a ceasefire and release of all hostages, and the importance of working together towards a political solution. 
based on the creation of a Palestinian state alongside a safe and secure Israel. The only way to provide long-term peace and security for both Israelis and Palestinians. Now that, of course, is not an easy goal, but it is one that we are committed to pursuing together because, as today shows, Britain can advance its interests much more effectively when we stand with our friends and partners. This treaty is part of a wider reset, grounded in a new spirit of cooperation, with our shared understanding that this will be developed at pace and that we hope to have agreed it by the end of the year. A Britain reconnected, resetting our relationship, rediscovering our common interests, delivering for working people. Britain and Germany already have an incredible relationship. We invest billions in each other's countries. Thousands and thousands of jobs are supported through trade. And every year, millions of people travel between our two countries, exchanging ideas, collaborating, creating, and connecting. But today, we build on that a bright new future for UK-German relations, two great countries brought closer together than ever before, the strongest strategic partners in Europe and on the world stage. Thank you so much for hosting us here today. Thank you. Thank you, Beth Rigby, Sky News. Prime Minister, uh, PM after PM has come to Berlin asking for a better deal, better trade deal, only to fail. You've ruled out rejoining the EU, the single market or customs union, but you know you'll have to make concessions for a better deal. Do you acknowledge that? And specifically, will you allow freedom of movement for young Germans? And Chancellor, our new Prime Minister is talking about a once-in-a-generation reset between UK and Europe. But does Berlin and your partners in Brussels have real appetite for the reset the Prime Minister is pledging? Can the UK really expect to cherry-pick better trade terms outside of the European Union? And is youth mobility something that might materially shift the dial for you? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Beth. Obviously, today is predominantly about the bilateral treaty that we will agree um, at pace, and we've talked about the substance of that today. And that will be ambitious. It will be wide-ranging, covering trade, uh, the economy, uh, defence, and many other issues. And the fact that we've agreed the substance, the ambition, and the pace of it today, I think, is very significant for both the UK and for Germany. And that's why I say it's a once in a generation opportunity uh, to take uh, something of that order forward for both of our countries. When it comes to the wider uh, reset with Europe, I'm absolutely clear that we do want a reset. I've been able to repeat that here uh, today, a reset with Europe, a reset with the EU. Uh, that does not mean reversing Brexit um, or re-entering the single market or the customs union but it does mean a closer relationship on a number of fronts, including the economy, including defence, including exchanges. Um, but we do not have plans um, for the youth mobility um, scheme, but we do have plans for a closer relationship between um, us and the EU as part of that white set. So the position today is exactly as it was before the um, election, but what we've been able to do today is to move that forward with the bilateral uh, treaty uh, agreement and to reiterate um, our desire to reset the relationships uh, with the EU. Thank you. I don't have much to add. From my point of view, we want to create good relations between the UK and the European Union. It can become better day by day, and we all share an interest. The historic decision uh, in Germany was taken. Um, Great Britain, the UK, has left the European Union, but we're friends. We live on the same continent, and from our point of view, from our perspective, and we are of the opinion that there is reason to do everything uh, in our power to improve relations between uh, our both countries, but also the UK and the European Union.
Herr Premierminister, Herr Bundeskanzler, Sie haben beide eben die Hilfe für die Ukraine noch mal beteuert. Es gibt aber Zweifel, ob dieses Finanzinstrument von G7 und der EU rechtzeitig für die Ukraine zur Verfügung steht, um Waffen zu kaufen. Deswegen ganz konkret die Frage an Sie beide. Wird, werden diese Windfall Profits aus den Frozen Russian Assets noch in diesem Jahr genutzt werden können, um der Ukraine einen Kredit über 50 Milliarden Euro, äh, Dollar zu geben? Und wie groß ist eigentlich der Anteil des Kredits, äh, den Großbritannien und auch Deutschland zu steuern? And Prime Minister, uh, second question for you. Uh, Germany will deploy American mid-range weapons from 2026 onwards uh, till Germany, France and Britain have developed own capacities in this field. How do you bridge the capability gap in this field, also with American weapons? Thank you. I will start. Es ist so, dass wir uns Well, in Apulia at the G7, we agreed on a lending big support to Ukraine with a loan to the tune of 50, 50 billion euro um, with windfall profits of the immobilized Russian uh, central bank's assets. And this is a major effort, but it is something that is possible, and we want to swiftly promote this. Uh, we're intensively working on um, a technical preconditions. I talked to the President of the European Commission as far as Europe's share, Germany's share is concerned and how we're going to do it. Uh, um, we have uh, far advanced. We coordinate closely with our American friends so that it fits well within their rules and regulations. And the same holds true for involving all of those who want to lend a contribution as part of G7, um, the UK, Canada, and Japan. And of course, we are happy if others chip in and join. These are the developments. And in this sense, um, in this regard, we're at work. And we hope that we have the pre uh, technical preconditions ready um, for it to happen. Thank you very much. In terms of the wider question about capability, obviously, um, the UK um, along with Germany, along with key allies, uh, does already provide support and weaponry, uh, particularly in relation to the conflict in Ukraine, which is where we've been working so closely um, together. So far as the UK is concerned, um, there's been no change of position, no new decisions made in relation to capability. Um, and the contribution we make is um, in accordance and consistent with the contribution that was made before the election because there's been a high degree of consensus, political consensus, uh, in the UK in relation to that. Um, as you would expect, Ukraine was a part of our discussion here um, this morning as we looked at the challenges um, ahead. Um, and our resolve is, as ever, to stand shoulder to shoulder uh, with Ukraine to provide um, the support that it needs for as long as it needs. Thank you. Well, look, I mean, I'm not sure there's much um, I can uh, add to what the Chancellor already said. Uh, thank you, Chris McKeon, Press Association. Um, Following on the subject of Ukraine and weapons and long-range weapons, uh, firstly, Prime Minister, is it the case that it is American objections that are preventing the uh, use of storm shadow missiles to target, uh, well, to hit targets in Russia? And what discussions have you had with the Chancellor on lifting restrictions on the use of weapons in Russia? And uh, Chancellor, uh, is now the time to consider? lifting restrictions on the use of German-supplied weapons against Russian targets, particularly uh, supplying F-16 jets and uh, Taurus missiles? Uh, let me uh, just uh, address that. O obviously, and as you know, we have been providing support and weaponry uh, to Ukraine consistent with the approach of other key allies, including Germany. Um, we supported the approach and the framework um, put forward by the previous government in the United Kingdom when we were in opposition um, and we are acting consistently with that in government and that's why I'm very clear that no new or different decisions have been um, made. I'm not going to get into um, 
tactical questions about the use of weapons for very obvious um, reasons, but no new decisions have been taken. Um, but Ukraine is, of course, a constant theme of discussion between um, NATO allies, um, and we all recognize uh, the need to stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. Um, and we've renewed that commitment here this morning. Deutschland is, uh Germany is one of the very large supporters uh, of Ukraine in Europe. Within Europe, we are the largest contributor. We are continue, going to continue this support, and uh, this support is uh, bolstered and added by the 50 billion loan that we pre prepared as G7, and we're intensively working on realizing this. As far as weapon supplies uh, concerned, there are new, no new decisions from Germany. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. The knife-stabbing attacks in Solingen have led to a debate in Germany as to how to uh, limit irregular um, uh, migration. You just announced that uh, there will be a new action plan between the UK and Germany on this topic. Which tangible measures are contained in this action plan and prime minister what are the recommendations uh, to the chancellor based on your own experiences in dealing with knife stabbing attacks in uh, um, Solingen and mr chancellor the opposition leader friedrich merz offered to support laws draft bills without the support of your coalition partners this would infringe upon the coalition treaty are you categorically against this uh, because of that reason Zunächst mal, wir haben uns First of all, yes, we intensively exchanged views on the terrible attack of Solingen. I'm very grateful for the condolences and the solidarity expressed by uh, the Prime Minister in our personal meeting and for reiterating his condolences here. Uh, it is uh, terrible, terrible indeed what happened there, and I'm going to continue, and I will not uh, forget uh, meeting those who were there, um, who are so suffering and going through uh, difficult emotions because it was a terrible situation for the people uh, fighting for their lives. And we know three people have lost their lives in this terrible attack. This terrible, murderous attack caused uh, people's lives and uh, further victims continue to be hospitalized. Hospitalized. We mourn the victim and we wish a speedy and comprehensive recovery to uh, those who have been injured. We can't go back to daily business after this attack. We cannot do that. We will not do that. We will draw the necessary lessons. It is clear we are uh, continuing our efforts to contain irregular migration into Germany. As far as we know, uh, the perpetrator of Solien, Solingen uh, was supposed to have left Germany already. He was supposed to be deported to Bulgaria. We are going to closely investigate why this did not happen, why authorities did not deport him. And uh, this needs to change uh, so that uh, such terrible attacks don't happen again. In order to contain irregular migration, the government, in cooperation with the federal states um, and the Bundesrat and the Bundestag, has um, passed uh, um, measures in the past 12 months, a law on deportation, which has removed legal and bureaucratic obstacles that lends, uh, assists authorities in deporting uh, perpetrators. The police now has more authorities to uh, search and look for um, uh, people who are to be deported and uh, persons can be detained longer, and asylum seekers receive a reduced amount of support. At the same time, we massively expanded controls and border checks, and we will continue to um, do so as long as it is possible. All of these uh, decisions show uh, effects. The number of those who come to Germany have 
illegally have reduced. And in comparison to 2021, um, the number of people deported uh, has increased by 60%. And yet the numbers are not the way the citizens expect them to be and the way I hope them to be. This is why the federal government is going to continue its efforts to contain and limit irregular migration further. Um, we are going to um, discuss new and coordinate new um, measures, um, a tightening of weapons laws, measures uh, against violent Islamism, and uh, further measures in order to make repatriation um, easier. Um, it is a good signal when the largest uh, opposition party signals its cooperation and the willingness to cooperate, and we welcome this willingness to cooperate with us. The federal government is going to swiftly take the necessary decisions with representatives of the federal states and the CDU-CSU party, and also talk about proposals uh, um, that are made. The federal minister of interior is going to invite swiftly um, um, uh, chairman of the prime uh, ministers' conferences of the federal states and representatives of the respective ministries for um, meetings um, on this matter. The aim of uh, this joint um, effort is clear. We want to further reduce irregular migration to uh, Germany. At the same time, we all know um, Germany needs and relies on regular immigration. 20 million of uh, citizens with uh, migrant background uh, lend a contribution to economic uh, prosperity. They're well integrated as neighbors, as classmates. They pay taxes. It's a su success story, and we can be proud of this. With modernization, with, with modernizing the laws on immigration and um, uh, nationality, the federal government has um, um, uh, uh, made a big effort. Um, the state has to contain irregular immigration so as to not to overburden the country. This can and must succeed um, without questioning our basic law and also international treaties. Um, we owe this uh, to the victims of Solingen. In addition to the terrible attacks here in Germany, I just reiterate our thoughts are with um, all of the victims and their families in what is a very difficult uh, set of circumstances. On the wider question of irregular migration and the particular issue that we have in the UK of small boats crossing the Channel, um, I have long said before the election that I thought the Rwanda scheme was a gimmick, which is why um, we stood it down immediately, but nonetheless, it is very important that we take back control of our borders. Um, I have long been convinced that the best way, the most effective way to do that is to take down the gangs that are running the vile trade uh, of putting people in dangerous situations uh, across Europe and across the Channel. Um, and I said before the election that I would invest political capital in making sure we could work more effectively with our partners in taking down those gangs. And that's why I'm very pleased today uh, that we've had a substantive discussion, um, agreed to a joint action plan, um, and that will, as you would expect, um, deal with issues like data sharing, intelligence sharing, what we can do on joint um, operations, because that is the way uh, to take effective action in relation to the vile trade that sits beneath um, irregular migration across Europe, and in particular sits beneath uh, the vile trade of putting people into small boats across the Channel. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. This concludes our press conference. Thank you.